Did you know that here in BC, real estate agents cannot double end a property? Well, if you did know that, then congratulations, you're wrong. Because here in BC, real estate agents like me can still technically double end property sales. But what we cannot do is offer limited dual agency to both the buyer and seller in the same transaction. And if you find that confusing, don't worry, you're not alone. But just because in this case, the law is stupid, that doesn't mean that you don't have to follow it. And in the event you choose to be stupid and try to negotiate your own deal on a property without engaging your own real estate agent, realtors like me would then have to show you something called the disclosure of risks to unrepresented parties form. And that is what I'm going to share with you here today, but not before obviously asking you to subscribe to the channel if you would like to stay up to date on the Surrey and Fraser Valley real estate markets. And please go ahead and click the like button to get get this educational real estate channel out to other people just like you across the province so you can take credit for saving your fellow British Columbians from making terrible real estate choices as they help drive up real estate prices around you. And of course, if you are smart enough to hire your own agent and you think that agent should be me or my team, well, you can go ahead and book a call with me right now using the link in the description below at a time that works best for you. And now on to dual agency, double ending, and yes, the risks that you take if you go at it on your own. So the first thing you need to know is that no, real estate agents in BC cannot represent the buyer and the seller in a single transaction. That law was changed back in 2018. And as far as I'm aware, this is the only place in the entire world that this happens. But I'm sure the comments will correct me if I am wrong. So if you walk into an open house and meet the agent and that agent is the listing agent for that property, they cannot help you buy that home as your agent, but they can still help you buy that home if you are not gonna use them as your agent. You see the buyer and the seller using the same agent is a little bit like the plaintiff and defendant that are suing each other using the same lawyer. It just doesn't make sense. But you as the defendant could show up to court without any representation at all. And if that is the case, the seller's agent could help you prepare the offer, but really with no advice. Meaning that yes, they can still help facilitate both ends of the transaction, but in doing so, they can only owe fiduciary duty to their clients, in this case, the seller. And they can give you no advice at all, including what to pay for the property or what conditions that you should insert into the contract. So that is why the very first step that every agent in BC should take with their client or potential client is to show them something called the DORT or the Disclosure of Representation in Trading Services, followed by the Privacy Notice and Consent Form. And for more information on the DORT, please go ahead and watch this video. But after I do that, and a potential buyer of one of my listings wanted to continue negotiating their own deal without their own agent, then I have to present them with another form, a third disclosure called the Disclosure of Risks to Unrepresented Parties, or what I like to call anything you say can and will be used against you in a negotiation. So that is the purpose of today's video. Let me read you this form and then you can make the call on if you would still like to represent yourself or if you would like to hire an agent of your own. Okay, as you can see at the top here, this is a BCFSA or the Regulating Bodies form. And it says, not a client, know the risks. Real estate professionals have a regulatory requirement to present you with this customer information. This information from the BC Financial Services Authority explains the risks of working with a real estate professional who is already representing a client in the same transaction. We recommend that you seek independent representation in this real estate transaction. Yeah, as real estate agents, we actually have to tell you, hey, it's not a good idea if you keep this up and you should go find another agent on your own. Then in big letters, be cautious. The real estate professional who gave you this form is already representing a client in the transaction. They owe a duty of loyalty to that client and they must work on that client's best interest. They cannot represent you 
or work for your interests in the transaction. Well, if you haven't stopped here, let's keep going. This real estate professional must tell their client any relevant information that you share with them. For example, if disclosed by you, they must share the following information. Reasons you're buying the home. Your minimum or maximum price. Yeah, if you say, hey, this is what I can afford, I have to tell my clients that. Any preferred terms and conditions that you want included in the contract. Only share information if you are comfortable with this information being disclosed to the other party in the transaction, meaning that anything you tell me if I'm not your agent and I'm working for the other person, I am legally obligated to tell the other person, which is my client. Now, here is what you can and cannot do while you are representing one party to the transaction and facilitating the other party. This real estate professional can only provide you with very limited services because the real estate professional must be loyal to their client and work in their client's interest. They can only give you limited assistance. They cannot give you advice on the price, give you advice. You're going to notice this advice kind of thing. Keep going here. Any terms or conditions that you should include in the contract. They cannot negotiate on your behalf. They cannot share their client's confidential information with you, their pricing, or the reasons that they are wanting to move, and they do not protect your confidential information. But the agent can do this, and this is where they can help facilitate the transaction. The agent not working for you can share information about the property and the information about real estate statistics. They can show you the property and provide, again, factual information. They can provide you with standard real estate forms and contracts, so you can actually make an offer with this agent. They just can't tell you what to put in that offer. They can fill out the standard real estate contract with you, and they can communicate your messages and present your offer to their client. And that is why I call this form. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a negotiation. Now it is actually a two page form, not a client, know the risks, continued disclosure of risk to unrepresented party. This is a required disclosure form. So keep that in mind. If you are going direct to the listing agent, they have to show you this form. So if they're not showing you that form, that is actually a problem in compliance with section 55 of the real estate services rules. A real estate professional must present the not a client, know your risks and information page to you along with this form, real estate professional disclosure details. And then this is the section that we fill out so everybody completely understands what's going on in the transaction. And at this point, you have the option or not, this is the part I don't agree with, you actually don't have to sign this form. And that's kind of the part that I have an issue with because then it is possible that the listing agent, if they're not on the up and up, could submit this form without your initials on it or your signature on it. And well, they could say they showed it to you when maybe they didn't. And I like this the best. All the disclosure forms say, this is not a contract. Obviously encouraging you, the unrepresented party, to sign off understanding that no, this in itself is not the offer. So there you have it. That is the disclosure form that you will see if you decide to represent yourself in a transaction of real estate here in BC. Let me know in the comments if being presented with this form in the middle of a transaction would stop you in your tracks or if you think it's just fine and you would still like to continue on your own without your own professional representing you in the transaction and therefore protecting your interests. Oh, and please go ahead and subscribe, click the like button, and we'll see you in a couple of days.